All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra's Lair. I'm your host, Larry, and we're back for another indie gaming first look, taking a sneak peek at the early access version of Crip Runner. It's a dungeon crawler made by Foos Dev. It's available for $8 when it's not on sale, I believe, right now, because it just launched onto early access. It's available for 40-ish percent off. It's, it's probably way less than it would normally be for, at least half off usually is what people do. Somewhere in 25%, 50%. And it takes us into the bowels of a very minimalist dungeon to go and explore, gather items and weapons, and try to get all the way to the end and beat the dungeon boss. There's not really a ton of story in the game. I'm not 100% sure if any is going to be added. It's what I would describe as sort of just a quintessential dungeon crawling thing where you just go in here to explore and shoot other dungeon denizens so that they don't get fancy with your backside or a dozen freaking slimes sneaking up on me around the corner. And a lot of the enemies in this game are going to be a combination of monsters or seeming monsters that are going to come at you and other colorful neon gremlin style characters like the one that we're currently playing which all have a different variety of weapon a lot of the weapons in here are going to look and feel oh i'm about to die already they're about actually let's restart that because i don't want to start off with so little health but a lot of the weapons inside of crypt runner is going to look like either a different kind of gun that uses one of two ammo types i'd call them light ammo and heavy ammo or it's going to be things like items that give a passive buff. So you get like extra speed, you take less damage, you do more damage. You know the secrets of Fern Gully. And you got to avoid those in the occasional dungeon trap with enemies to get to the higher level floors and presumably defeat a dungeon boss. I've only gotten so far in this game so far as... I like the game and I kind of like the graphics, but there's something about putting sprites in a 2D, from a 2D environment into a 3D environment that kind of jankles with your ability to see enemies that are sneaking around corners because there's not as much uh, dimension or space being utilized here that can tell you that stuff is there. Like this guy just kind of easily snuck up on me because I couldn't see him in the shadows. Something about the interplay of not having some extra dimension or physical presence to the enemies kind of messes with me when I go into a new room with a sharp corner. It's really easy to get cornered. But once you kind of get past that and learn the enemy patterns, like any dungeon crawling experience, you'll get pretty far. I think I died pretty quick originally when I first played this. I got through, like, most of the first level before accidentally getting snuck up on by spiders. The spiders, of course, spawned from a little dead body that had been infested by them in the corner that I accidentally shot. And the spiders, unsurprisingly, weren't the biggest fan of that. So looks like I'm out of regular blaster ammo, which means I'm going to have to just mono e mono people in the next room. If there is an extra room, it looks like this might actually be a relatively short floor. Which isn't bad. I can right click at any time, pull out these dual dagger action things. Or maybe it's just a big long sword. I'm not really sure how to interpret that animation, but the fact remains that I have the ability to go ham on these slime things. That's right, I am your king now! Um. I will refrain from blasting any of these barrels with a regular with my swords, although it looks like I got too close there. Because I don't want to deal with that nonsense. And we'll just kind of play it safe until we have a lot more ammunition. I don't think that there's a boss on this first floor. When I was playing before, I didn't really encounter that, but who knows. It might be random, like a lot of other things in these types of games. Oh, hey, I've got a... I've got a try shot for this scout rifle. Hell yeah. Oh, there's a dude behind me. There we go. Shoot you in the face. 
I don't know, it's it's not a crazy dungeon crawler right now by any means, but if you like the genre and you like a really simple minimalist indie feeling set of graphics, this would definitely be a game for you. I think that you would fully enjoy this title, because even though I'm not always the biggest fan of every dungeon crawler, I kind of got sick of The Binding of Isaac after a while, because it just kind of felt like that was on the more ridiculous side. I can definitely seal the appeal of this particular title for a lot of people. Alright, this, I think, is, yep, that's a spider cocoon. Let me just destroy that. So that was what I blew up before. I thought it was a corpse, but it's just a little spider's egg sack. And these things swarmed me. There's probably like seven of them. And they decided to make mincemeat out of my face. Which... I don't know. If you're into that, I mean, good for you. I'm not. I Like I said, I'm usually before on my channel, I like my organs on the inside of my body, my face, to remain neatly where it belongs. Oh hey, we got a fire shield. What does a fire shield do? A fire shield, less damage from explosives. That's actually probably pretty useful for later. I have no doubt that in a game where... What is this? That's just another scout rifle. I have no doubt that in a game where exploding barrels are a thing and all the enemies have different weapon types, that we may encounter a grenade launcher in the not-too-distant future. I'm about to die again because I wanted to be fancy and stab these guys. I will say, trying to do some clutch maneuvering in this game is easier said than done. And I probably shouldn't be wasting ammunition on stabbing crates, provided they don't sometimes have monsters or bugaboos in them. But c'est la vie, c'est la vu. It's all part of the learning curve with games like these. You never quite know how they're going to go. An enchanted ring. I don't mind if I do. Tab. What does this do? It's plus 10 to max health. Sure, I'll take it. Why not? It's one of those things, if you got the money, you might as well spend it, because you never know if you're gonna die or not. Alright, do it. Do it, shoot me, you nerds! Well, that's one of you. Alright, that's the evil... I almost want to call some of these dudes, like, Bone Warlocks. Because they kind of got that evil, sinister vibe going to them, like they're about to steal someone's soul. So let's see what's on the other side of this door. Before we end off this preview here today. So this is just the second floor. It doesn't look like there's anything particularly amiss or different about it. You just work your way through. I'm guessing they probably have it sectioned off into different zones. That's generally what a, a game will do. It'll be like, this is the dungeon zone with the spiders. This is the dungeon zone with the mimics. This is the dungeon zone that seems to play the Beach Boys a lot, and when you get distracted by the beat, decide to try to jump you. And uh, then after you beat that particular boss, you go into a deeper, more sinister version of the dungeon, where things might not go exactly as planned, yes. Really, the only thing that consistently gets me is trying to get, deal with the little melee guys before they get too close. If you don't shoot them immediately as they start to kind of wibble wobble towards you when they decide to make a snack out of you, you're probably going to get nommed on at least a little bit. As to like what I would change in this game, I mean, you really don't need to change anything. I think this is a case where Foosdev, the creator, has already got a pretty good idea of where they want this to go. So now you just got to expand upon that and add more details that you would traditionally expect to see from a dungeon crawler. It might be interesting to see that these rooms start to gain more dimensions to them where you have to like walk up and down stairs than just a flat plane like every other dungeon crawler that's ever been made in the history of ever. That's a little too standard, I would say. Like, it's okay to mix and match some of the environments and some of the stuff that you fight. Maybe something I would love to see is if you incorporated a lot more environmental details that would allow you to kill the enemies by luring them over these spikes. Actually, I would change these spikes so that they're easier to see, because they kind of look a lot like this tile, just without the lines, and then you run into them without realizing it, because, again, it's a flat plane. So maybe, like, a slight... 
Maybe if this was dipped down into the ground a little bit. So that when you saw it, you're like, oh, there's a difference in the terrain. I better be careful. Is that it? Do you just keep going up floors until you eventually run into the boss? Yeah, it looks that way. It looks like you got like, what, one, two, three, four, four, five, six floors before a boss. And now we're starting to get into heavily armored enemies that have got like a hat on and that I think that was a skeleton. So yeah, the, the enemies keep changing, which is good. You need something like that in a game like this to keep the variety going, to keep up the challenge. I would be very careful about just making enemies require additional bullets to kill because that's always really boring. I don't think that really adds a challenge that's just more of the same. And in fact, it's usually a tedious more of the same and you don't want your game to be tedious if that's not intentional for something. But other than that, you know, more of the same, play around with the standard genre of dungeon crawler so it's not just yet another flat dungeon. You know, think about three-dimensional space a little bit. I know this is not really your typical three-dimensional game where you're trying to do a puzzle in, say, a platformer or a Zelda game, but you could still manage to add a little bit more variety, and then this game would really pop, you know? You gotta kind of do something that really gets the point across that not only do you know about how to make a really solid dungeon crawler, which you clearly do, but you know how to m improve upon it to add that next missing detail that's been missing from so many other indie titles up until this point. That's just my thoughts for Foos Dev. I'll be interested to see where this game goes in the future. I mean, it's at a good price point at about $8. I could definitely see a lot of people that like dungeon crawlers picking that up. Graphics are solid. They all fit a very strong theme. Whether or not you like a minimalist game that looks like it was done so that it could appeal to more, maybe more of like an indie game dev game jam crowd is up to you. It's kind of like an individual thing, whatever your preference is. But so far, I fully approve of this game. I like what it's got going on so far, and I'm interested to see more. I'd probably come back to this if there's a big update. So yeah, that'll be it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. I've been your host, Larry. This has been a brief look at, Dun or at Crypt Runner. It's a dungeon crawler that allows you to play as a blue gremlin with a gun. What's not to love? So until next time, I've been your host, Larry. I'd recommend checking this out if you like dungeon crawlers.